back to my channel my name is Melody and welcome to my Simple Valley home in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you guys on how to make these beautiful DIY spring arrangements I love making my own arrangements especially when it comes to the holidays spring is definitely one of my favorites because of all the pastel colors they just bring that beautiful greenery inside your home so in this video I'm going to be sharing with you on how to make this beautiful arrangement uh, these are actually made with crepe paper flowers that my mom actually does for a hobby I'm also going to be sharing with you how to make this tulip vase a couple cloches and also I had a wreath that I got from my recent haul I just added a couple touches of spring so if you guys enjoy any type of decorating or even DIY videos please give this video a thumbs up don't forget to hit that subscribe button and if you guys are curious on how I made these arrangements then keep on watching Here's the supplies that you guys are going to need for our first arrangement. You're going to pick up three glass containers. I got these from the Dollar Tree along with the foam. And then I also went to Hobby Lobby just to pick up my moss. I picked up a green one and I also got a regular one just to add different types of textures. I also thrifted this container. It is one of my favorite baskets I ever found. It's nice and deep. I just thought it would make that perfect spring statement for my table. Besides the other moss, I decided to pick up this type of moss from Joann's. I love the different types of green textures. It will just add more elements to our centerpiece. And last but not least is my favorite item. Of course, these DIY crepe paper flowers that my mom made me. They are absolutely stunning. I can never get enough of how realistic they look. Our first step is to prep and we're just going to go ahead and take our foam and add it to the glass containers. You guys are welcome to get any size glass containers but I find that these are the perfect size for my basket. I always recommend going to the Dollar Tree to pick up craft items. They're very inexpensive for any of your projects. The next step is that you're going to want to take your containers and just place them as so in your centerpiece. Now I'm going to arrange my flowers into three different batches with three different colors. I just find that this gives a little bit more interest, depth, and texture. I also want to let you guys know that I will have links down below of all the crepe paper information, the websites where my mom gets her supplies, all the, all the YouTube videos where she learned from, and also a website where she learned uh, different types of patterns and everything. So these are really simple and easy to make and super fun. Now for the messy part, I'm going to go ahead and start taking my moss and just placing it into the basket and just getting it nice and packed full so that way my arrangements stay up. You guys are also welcome to use any type of fillers but I find that using Spanish moss is a little bit cheaper to fill up this big basket. And also just so you guys know you don't necessarily have to use crepe paper flowers you guys can use any type of florals from any store I just wanted my spring arrangement just to be a little bit different this year just step outside the box and just create something visual to the eye now I'm gonna go ahead and start compacting the moss just to get it ready for my next step and that is to just take the green moss and just evenly spread it on top there's really no right or wrong reason to make this look. I feel like the less you do, the more effortless it looks and it just looks like there's dirt under the ground with some grass growing up. When I wanted to create this look, I really wanted to mimic real irises popping out of the ground as they first bloom. So that's why I really didn't add any other filler besides just the moss. Now let's add some more texture, more nature. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and take my moss palettes and just simply place it wherever. I also like that I was just kind of playing around with it and I find that the moss, when it's just kind of spread everywhere just effortlessly, it looks real. And I decided to also add a little bit more moss texture in between each flower just to really make it look like it really was full in the ground. 
And here is the final result for my spring centerpiece. I absolutely love it. I think it turned out so beautiful. You guys can also take this idea and add Easter eggs in the basket for Easter. I think that would be really fun and cute. You can add rabbits, butterflies. There's just so many things that you can do with this arrangement. But I want to keep it really simple. Just make a statement with these beautiful irises that my mom made. Thank you again, mom, for making these. They're absolutely stunning. Now let's make our next arrangement. I'm gonna be using the same supplies as I used for my iris inspired centerpiece. Only this time I'm gonna use a terracotta pot for my centerpiece and some more of those beautiful crepe paper flowers. This time there are tulip inspired, more foam from the Dollar Tree and then using the leftover moss from Hobby Lobby and Joann's. Just like our last project, we're gonna prep. We're gonna take our foam and add it to our container. I got my container actually from my yard, so there's nothing better than a free item for a good DIY project. And let's get messy. This time we're gonna add the moss first before we add our flowers. I'm gonna do the same method by adding the brown moss and then next will be the green moss just to do an evenly spread on top to make it look like grass. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tulips and just stick them all in the center. Just make them look like they just got freshly planted into this beautiful pot. What I found fun about using these crepe paper flowers versus fl usual florals is that the stems were actually a lot easier than I thought. And then also the leaves were super fun to bend and shape and mold and kept their shape. They were just mimicking just a real flower and I just love the texture that it brings to this centerpiece. Just like the last arrangement, I'm gonna add my moss, but this time I'm gonna really pile it in thick in between the stems, just so I can hide them. I'm also gonna add a little bit more brown moss than the green moss, just to give it that more spring vibe, make it look like it's aged out in you know that misty air, just give it a visual of just something fresh and new popping out of the garden. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take the leaves and just kind of bend them and shape them to my liking. The, again, these are so awesome. They're able to just keep its shape and it's just that texture. You just can't go wrong with it. It just looks absolutely beautiful. I decided to use this arrangement in my kitchen. I just love the look of it. It just looked like I picked it out of the garden and brought it here in my kitchen. I added elevation by using a cake stand. And here is the final result. I can't get enough of this arrangement. It is so perfect. It brought me all those beautiful farmhouse cottage feels. I wanted to go with those white tulips because I really wanted it to match these tiny little white tulips that I got from Michael's. It just brought so much Easter spring vibes, all the different textures of the greens, the whites. It was just perfect. Now for our next project, you're gonna need some floral wire, some wire cutters, some bird's nests. I picked these up from Hobby Lobby. More of that mossy green texture from Joann's. And then of course, some wreaths. I picked up these beautiful fern wreaths from Hobby Lobby and their floral department on 50% off. I just thought they brought that perfect spring look. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our bird's nest and just figure out the placement that we want on a wreath. I decided to do off center. I'm going to take my floral wire and just cut up a little strip, just a decent amount so that way I can cut it later. And I'm going to simply lace it through the bird's nest, just kind of weave it through. And then I'm going to give it a little twist on the back and then tie it to my wreath. The reason why I did this versus hot gluing the bird's nest is that way I can recycle these wreaths for different projects. Thank you. 
I decided to use a bird's nest to add to this wreath just because I thought it would be perfect for spring. I'm adding a lot of different bird's nests and birds and rabbits to my decor this year for spring. You guys can also use bunches of flowers in place of the bird's nest if you want to add a different take on the wreath. The great thing about floral wire is if you don't like it, you just take it off and the wreath is not ruined. Now that I got my wreath assembled, I'm going to take my hot glue gun and just put a couple dollops in my nest. I'm going to take some of that moss and I'm just going to start placing it into uh, some areas. I'm going to use a lot of the green moss this time and then just do touches of the brown. I want to give it a little bit different texture into this nest than I usually do. I usually add all green. What would be really cool besides adding the moss, you guys can hot glue eggs in here or even a little bird, you can add little twigs. I just decided to use the plain moss just because I wanted to create that cottage garden look. And here's the final result. I think they turned out so precious. They were so inexpensive, easy to make, and it's just that perfect touch for your spring wreaths. I will be putting these little cuties all over my house for spring, but my favorite place to put it is in my kitchen. I love putting it on my cabinet doors. I put a command hook on the inside, strung the wreath with some jute twine and tied it to the door so that way it doesn't move when I open it. I just think it's the perfect greenery touch to this space. It just brings that garden feel over to my cabinets. Now let's assemble our floral cloches. All my cloches are thrifted. The one on the right is from my most recent haul. I got all my florals from Michaels, Joann's, and Hobby Lobby. These last two are perfect. They are from Michaels. I thought they would bring that height and texture to our item. I love the delicate white flowers. These two bird's nests are also perfect because they add that spring touch. Those are from Michaels. I also got more of those flower foams from the Dollar Tree tree and we're going to use more of that Spanish moss and leftover moss to put this arrangement together. Just like the other arrangements we're going to go ahead and prep. I'm going to take my floral foam and slice it in half with a regular kitchen knife. I just want to get that right height for this piece. Next, you're going to take your floral stem, the stem that you want to be used as your focal piece. You're going to take the stem, fold it in half, and then you're going to press it down in the front part of your arrangement. Now let's add some fillers. We're going to take the back part of our arrangement and just stick it in the middle just to create a little bit of fluff. I did two pieces so that way I can control how much fill I want to use. You can stop here, but I'm going to keep adding different textures of greenery. I'm going to add some eucalyptus just on the corner here, just to make a little bit different element and texture to this arrangement. Next, let's add a pop of color. I'm going to use my lavender that I had left over from my previous arrangements. Next, let's add more spring touches with this bird's nest. I decided to cut the stem off instead of having it bent in half, just because I found that it kept splitting my floral foam. And then I also decided to put it on the left-hand side of my floral piece, just because it would make it look a little bit more effortless than having it in the middle. And just like the other arrangements, we're going to go ahead and cover up this floral foam with the moss green textures. Even though it is in the back and it won't be seen, you just never know, I might place it in a different area, so it's good to have that floral foam not shown. 
I wanted to thank Jessica Griffin for giving me this idea. She did show this on her Instagram page and she's just wonderful. And I wanted to create something different for my bookcase and this was a perfect idea. I think the only thing that I would have been different I would have done differently is probably gotten a bigger cloche than what I got just so it really could stand out. But you do with what you have so that way you don't have to spend any more money and I think it turned out super cute. What's great about this arrangement is that you don't necessarily have to use the cloche. You can set it on a book, you can set it on any type of wood tray that you have laying around the house. It just creates that different spring look that you usually wouldn't do with any arrangement. And here's the final result. Even though my cloche is a little bit smaller than the arrangement itself, I still think it turned out really cute in my Pottery Barn cabinet. I might go out and get a bigger cloche up top just to make it pop a little bit better. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are and if I need to get a bigger top for this. For this next arrangement, I'm not going to be using any foam. I'm going to be using more of that Spanish moss just to create the base for our arrangement. Again, another focal flower that we'll be using for our arrangement. We're just going to fold it in half and just kind of angle it towards the front of our arrangement. After your focal piece is untangled with the moss, you're then going to add your greenery and add a little bit more texture with a different one, such as this eucalyptus, just like the same as our first piece. I decided to use more lavender in this piece because I'm going to be placing it in my pottery barn cabinet as well. And I love this lavender because it's by the Real Touch and so it looks so real. I got it from Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description box down below if you guys are interested. The last step is just to fill in those empty spaces that are visual to the eye with more moss. Here's the final results. I love how this one turned out because it reminds me of a small terrarium that you would find in a cottage home. These were so easy to make, inexpensive, and they're so perfect for that spring decor. Okay friends, that's it for today's video. I hope I inspired you guys on DIYing your own spring arrangements this year for spring. Please comment down below or visit me on my Instagram page at My Simple Valley Home if you guys have any questions and also let me know which one was your favorite. I can't wait for you guys to see these arrangements in my spring home tour, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys get notified. I had so much fun with you guys crafting today. I love a good craft day. DIYing is so much fun. Thank you guys again so much for stopping by. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye friends.